is looking at you, kid. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movie couples that did not live happily ever after. Love means never having to say you're sorry. I can't do this anymore. Promise me now, Rose. And never let go of that promise. For this list, we'll be looking at those big screen couples that, for better or for worse, didn't get the happy ending they were looking for. Beware, heartbreaking spoilers are coming your way. If we missed your favorite pair of star-crossed lovers, let us know who they are in the comments below. Number 20. Tom Hansen and Summer Finn – 500 Days of Summer Tom meets Summer on January 8th. He knows almost immediately she's who he's been searching for. It's your typical romance. Boy meets girl, girl tells boy she's not looking for something serious, boy doesn't listen and falls for her anyway. Girl leaves boy. Okay, maybe not so typical. 500 Days of Summer follows the relationship between Tom and Summer. Summer insists on keeping things casual, but Tom doesn't take her word for it and ends up falling. Hard. The two eventually break up, and later, Tom finds out Summer is engaged to someone else. I don't think I'll ever understand that. This one is interesting because even though the two main characters don't end up together, it was probably for the best. They both learned something important and moved on. And in Tom's case, to another girl with a season for a name. My name's Tom. Nice to meet you. I'm Autumn. Number 19. Sam Wheat and Molly Jensen. Ghost. I love you. I really love you. Ditto. When one of you is a spirit, chances are your story isn't going to end well. But at least we'll always have the memory of the time we made sweet pottery, right? Now just let the clay slide between your fingers. In Ghost, Sam is killed by a mugger right at the beginning of the movie, leaving his girlfriend Molly alone. But as the film's title would suggest, Sam sticks around as a ghost. Molly can't see him, but he's there. <sighs> Turns out, Sam has some unfinished business to attend to, and he spends the film trying to show Molly he's there while attending to said business. But when he finishes it, he has to move on. The two share one last kiss, and he's gone. Maybe heaven isn't a place on Earth. I've always loved you. <sighs> Ditto. Number 18. Oliver Barrett IV and Jennifer Jenny Cavallari. Love Story. Love means never having to say you're sorry. Love means never having to say you're sorry. But we might never forgive Love Story for making us cry like this. The classic 1970 film follows the story of Oliver and Jenny, two young people from opposite sides of the tracks who fall in love. What about our marriage? Who said anything about marriage? I'm saying it now. You want to marry me? Everything seems to be going all right for the lovebirds. They get married. Oliver graduates from law school, gets a job, but then Oliver finds out Jenny is terminally ill. The problem is more serious than that. Jenny is very sick. Define very sick. She's dying. It's a heartbreaking tale, but as Jenny says before she dies, it was worth it to see the love these two shared. It's not your fault. <laughs> Number 17, Chow Mowan and Mrs. Chan, In the Mood for Love. Mama. This beautiful film is all about longing and the secrets we keep, and the longing between Mr. Chow and Mrs. Chan is palpable. At first, the two come together as friends when they discover their spouses are cheating on them with each other. I'm not going to lie. I don't want them to do the relationship starts off friendly enough, but as time goes on, they can't deny their attraction to each other. Do they act on their feelings? No. Neither one wants to reduce themselves to the same behavior that their spouses did. The tension and desire lead to heartbreak, with an ending that will have you softly weeping in your seat. Number 18. 
Number 16. Cecilia Tallis and Robbie Turner. Atonement. I couldn't any longer imagine what purpose would be served by it. By what's very served by honesty. By honesty. Or reality. Sometimes, movies like to trick you into thinking there will be a happy ending. So is the case with 2007's Atonement, a story about a young girl, Bryony, who witnesses an intimate encounter between her sister Cecilia and their housekeeper's son, Robbie, and assumes, wrongly, the worst. The film moves through the lives of these three characters and the effect this event has on them. I knew what I did was terrible. I don't expect you to forgive me. Oh, don't worry, I won't. Robbie fights in World War II and is reunited with Cecilia afterwards. But, and big plot twist here, he wasn't. Turns out, Robbie and Cecilia both died during the war, and we're hearing this story from a grown-up Bryony, who became an author and wrote a happy ending for her sister. Not cool. I'd like to think this isn't weakness or evasion, but a final act of kindness. Number 15. Tony Stark and Pepper Potts, Avengers Endgame. Buckle up, folks. This one hurts. Oh <laughs> Iron Man was the first superhero introduced into the MCU back in 2008, so we had a lot of time to buy into the Tony Stark Pepper Potts relationship. And boy, did we. Pepper and Tony went through plenty of ups and downs. Anthony Edward Stark is not an easy man to be with, but by the time we made it to Endgame, the two were married, settled down, and even had a kid. All things we weren't sure Tony was capable of doing. I got my second chance right here, Cap. Can't roll the dice on it. So that made it hurt all the worse when he sacrificed himself for the entire planet, leaving Pepper and his daughter behind. You can rest now. We miss you, Tony, and we love you 3,000. Number 14, Katie Morosky and Hubble Gardner, The Way We Were. I refuse to support the government of the United States in any war it might conduct. Highly considered one of the greatest romances of all time, The Way We Were deals in memory and longing for a time long past. Partially using flashbacks, the story follows Katie and Hubble, who, despite their vast political and personal differences, fall in love with each other and end up getting married. But trouble in paradise quickly arises when the two move to Hollywood. Katie can't understand Hubble's lack of ambition and ambivalence towards politics, and Hubble can't stand being a disappointment to Katie. You and me, not causes, not principles. Hubble, people are their principles. Despite having a daughter together, the two part ways. At least, they'll always have the memories. Your girl is lovely, Hubble. Why don't you bring her for a drink when you come? Number 13. Jackson Jack Maine and Allie Maine. A Star is Born. No, I'll never love again. The A Star is Born tale is almost as old as Hollywood itself. Each rendition has its charms, but for this list, we're choosing to focus on the early 21st century iteration starring Bradley Cooper as country rock star Jackson Maine and Lady Gaga as Allie. I'm up the deep Throughout the story, Jackson struggles with addiction, his feelings about Allie's rising fame, as well as his own stardom, which is deteriorating. But what hurts so much about this lost romance is that, for a time, it feels like things are getting better. Jackson goes to rehab, and Allie's singing career is going well. But when Jack believes he's holding Allie back, he decides, like how other iterations do, to take his life. Number 12. Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Fans of the Spidey comics knew this one was coming, but that did not make it hurt any less. In this movie rendition of the Spider-Man story, Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker fight against Electro and the Green Goblin himself, and they almost make it out. You don't get me for You take it away? No, Harry. I'm gonna take away yours. When the Green Goblin kidnaps Gwen, Peter is able to fend him off, but not before Gwen falls to her death. This one is particularly hard because Peter and Gwen are played by Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, who were actually dating at the time. So watching Peter cry over Gwen's body, you got the feeling Andrew Garfield was really in that moment. Gwen! 
Number 11, Dean Pereira and Cindy Heller, Blue Valentine. What's your name? Go away. Go away? Go away. That's a weird name. <laughs> Don't be fooled by the holiday in the name of this one. Blue Valentine follows the course of a single relationship, from its sweet start to its ultimate downfall. And folks, this couple falls hard. Ryan Gosling and Michelle Williams star in this romantic drama, playing Dean and Cindy, a couple who meet, get married, and eventually end things. I can't do this anymore. But not before engaging in brutal arguments, crippling depression, and everything else under the sun along the way. Baby, you made a promise to me, okay? You said for better or worse. You said that. You said it. It was a promise. It's far from a sunny story, but what makes it harder is just how lovely the couple is at the beginning of their relationship. After they end things and the credits roll, you're reminded of their happier times through old pictures. And there's no going back. Number 10, Elio Perlman and Oliver, Call Me By Your Name. Call me by your name and I'll call you by mine. Elio? We couldn't get through this list without the obligatory coming-of-age heartbreak. Teenaged Elio meets grad student Oliver when he works for Elio's father at their Italian villa over the summer. They both stave off their initial attraction to each other for almost the entirety of the summer, but eventually give in and spend the last few days in a romantic haze. Are you happy I came here? I could kiss you if I could. Oliver eventually leaves, and Elio hangs on to the summer they had, until Oliver calls him over the winter to tell him he's getting married. That's wonderful news. It's a bittersweet phone call, and Timothy Chalamet's excellent performance during the closing credits has us sobbing every time. Number 9. Hazel Grace Lancaster and Augustus Gus Waters the fault in our stars. She didn't want a million admirers, she just wanted one, and she got it. We never thought we'd tear up from hearing the words, okay, okay, but here we are. The star-crossed lovers at the center of the fault in our stars already had enough going on in their lives without failed romance getting in the way. Hazel Grace has cancer, and Augustus, while in remission, had to have a leg removed. The two fall in love, and the entire time, the audience is primed for Hazel Grace's death. You gave me it forever. Within the numbered days. And for that, I am... I am eternally grateful. But in a terrible turn of events, Augustus's cancer returns and he passes away. Before Augustus dies, Hazel Grace reads her eulogy to him in a scene that still makes us weep to this day. Okay, Hazel Grace. Okay. Number 8. Christian and Satine, Moulin Rouge. Our gift is our lists, and viewers, this one's for you. Moulin Rouge is full of bright colors, popular songs, and romance. Sounds like a fun time, right? Unfortunately, this musical ends in heartbreak for everyone. Christian and Satine fall in love, but multiple obstacles work against them and keep them apart, including the fact that Satine has tuberculosis. Christian and Satine fight against all odds, but at the end of the movie, Satine ends up dying from her illness. Christian is left heartbroken, but he remembers her through song, honoring their love that will live forever. But above all things, a story about love. Number 7. Jamie Sullivan and Landon Carter, A Walk to Remember. You have to promise you won't fall in love with me. <laughs> That's not a problem. The words that spawned a thousand tears. A Walk to Remember tells the story of Jamie and Landon, and starts out as your typical good girl, bad boy romance. 
The two become close when Landon is forced to be in the school play as punishment. Who could forget the best song in the world only hope? And Jamie makes him promise he won't fall in love with her. Of course, he does, and then learns Jamie has leukemia. I told you not to fall in love with me. Instead of giving up on their love, Landon spends the rest of the movie making sure Jamie gets everything she wants before she dies, including the wedding of her dreams. Cue the tears. To honor and to cherish her all, all the days of my life. Of my life. Number 6. Sebastian Seb Wilder and Mia Dolan, La La Land. Who doesn't love a classic Hollywood musical? Well, this particular one doesn't end as happily as you might expect. What a waste of a lovely night. The story follows two struggling artists, Mia, an actress, and Sebastian, a jazz pianist, as they begin dating while both trying to follow their dreams. Unfortunately, there comes a time when they start to believe they can't have both each other and professional success and follow separate paths. You gotta give it everything you got. Everything. It's your dream. They meet five years later, both wildly successful, and a dream scene ensues, showing the life the two could have had if they decided to stay together. It's a gorgeous montage, and it's heartbreaking to watch the pair think about what could have been. Number 5. Scarlett O'Hara and Rhett Butler, Gone with the Wind There's one thing I do know, and that is that I love you, Scarlett. Chalk this one up to timing. Scarlett O'Hara spends pretty much the entirety of Gone with the Wind rebuffing Rhett Butler's advances and pining over her beloved Ashley, even when she and Rhett are literally married. No, I don't think I will kiss you. Although you need kissing badly, that's what's wrong with you. You should be kissed and often, and by someone who knows how. She denies him over and over again, until towards the end of the movie, she realizes she's been in love with Rhett the entire time. But by the time she figures it out, Rhett has had enough. He leaves her uttering that famous line, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. And honestly, it's probably for the best. These two are the definition of toxicity. But boy, do we love to watch them. You were no down cardly, nasty thing, you. They were right, everybody was right, you. You are a gentleman. Number four, Ennis Delmar and Jack Twist, Brokeback Mountain. I wish I knew how to quit you. <laughs> then why don't you? We wish we knew how to quit this movie, because it makes us break down in tears every time. Ennis and Jack's relationship starts off professional but quickly becomes romantic. But being two men in the 1960s, they can't exactly shout their love from the rooftops. It's nobody's business but ours. You know I ain't queer. Me neither. They both end up marrying women, but keep meeting up with each other over the years. Until eventually it becomes too hard for Ennis to admit his feelings, and too hard for Jack to keep getting his hopes up. But that's not the saddest part. Jack ends up dying, leaving Ennis alone, wondering if things could have been different. The end of the movie is tragic, and like we said at the beginning of this entry, breaks us down every time. Number 3. Rick Blaine and Ilsa Lund, Casablanca You said I was to do the thinking for both of us. Well, I've done a lot of it since then. It all adds up to one thing. You're getting on that plane with Victor where you belong. But Richard, no one... Now, but... you've got to listen to me. Here's looking at you, viewers. Casablanca is one of the most iconic films of all time, but it also has one of the most famous lost romances. Starring Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman, the movie follows Rick, an expat who owns a nightclub in Casablanca during World War II. His life is turned upside down when Ilsa, a woman he used to be involved with, shows up. You knew how much I loved you. How much I still love you. Although Ilsa is now married, the two rekindle their relationship and almost run away together. But Rick changes his mind at the last minute, sure that Ilsa will regret leaving her husband for him. The two share a tearful goodbye, one that we won't soon forget. He's looking at you, kid. Number 2. Romeo Montague and Juliet Capulet. Romeo and Juliet. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Truer words have never been spoken, 
We had to include the original star-crossed lovers in this list. And, of course, had to go with the Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes iteration. We mean, what teen didn't swoon over the pool balcony scene? Romeo. Oh, Romeo. Where for out thou Romeo? Everyone knows the story of Romeo and Juliet, but the tragic end of the 1996 movie hits a little harder than most. Seal with the righteous kiss. Right as Romeo poisons himself, Juliet wakes up. The two lock eyes right before Romeo starts to die, making their final fate even harder to accept. Thus, with a kiss I die has never hurt so much. With a kiss. And I before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jack Dawson and Rose DeWhip Bucator, Titanic. Promise me now, Rose. <laughs> and never let go of that promise. <laughs> I promise. Rose won't ever let go, and we won't either. We're going down with this ship. Jack and Rose meet aboard the Titanic, and despite their differing backgrounds, Jack is poor, Rose is upper class, they immediately fall in love. The name of the movie is Titanic, so audiences knew this couple didn't have much of a shot to begin with. But even in the terror of watching the ship go down, we hoped and prayed for the pair to make it out alive. Of course, Rose lives, but Jack dies, and the heartbreaking sequence of her trying to shake him awake when help arrives is burned into our brains. I'll never let go. I promise. <laughs> Couldn't you make some room on the debris, Rose? Come on! agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.